The U.S. Uh, completes withdrawal of its forces from Afghanistan late Monday, ending 20 years of war that culminated in the Taliban's return to power. The U.S. Army also posted a photo of the last soldier leaving Kabul. He was identified as Major General Chris Donahue, who boarded a C-17 aircraft to leave Kabul, marking the end of the U.S. mission in the country. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said they've suspended diplomatic presence in Kabul and also transferred operations to Doha. He added that less than 200 Americans are still left in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, as the U.S. pullout was complete, the Taliban rejoiced with celebratory firing. Taliban spokesperson said they want to have good relations with the world and that American defeat is a lesson for invaders. The United States finally completing withdrawal of forces, ending America's longest war. The last U.S. military plane took off from Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul on Monday, hours before the official deadline that ends on Tuesday. Here's more. Ominous gunfire ringing out to the Kabul airport. The Taliban celebrating the last of U.S. troops leaving at the dead of night. <laughs> Opening fire from automatic weapons after storming the airport. Moments earlier, the last U.S. evacuation flight had taken off, ending the 20-year-old U.S. military presence on Afghan soil. Major General Chris Donahue was the last U.S. soldier to leave Kabul in a C-17 jet. U.S. night vision camera photo from inside the Globemaster capturing the haunting yet iconic moment. Photos of the last batch of U.S. men evacuating showed largely empty barracks at the airport. We're here right now with the Taliban as they enter into the, what was only minutes ago, uh, it was an American controlled portion of the military airport. Now they're taking over. The U.S. air machines and tanks were found abandoned. Many deliberately wrecked by departing U.S. troops in order to stop the Taliban from using them. I'm here to announce the completion of our withdrawal from Afghanistan and the end of the military mission to evacuate American citizens, third country nationals and vulnerable Afghans. The last C-17 lifted off from Hamad Karzai International Airport on August 30th this afternoon at 3.29 p.m. East Coast time. The pullout ending a hasty and humiliating retreat one minute before midnight Kabul time on Monday, a full day before the 31st August troop pullout deadline could end, leaving behind hundreds of U.S. citizens and abandoning thousands of Afghan allies possibly eligible for airlift. We believe there are still a small number of Americans, under 200, and likely closer to 100, who remain in Afghanistan and want to leave. As of today, we've suspended our diplomatic presence in Kabul and transferred our operations to Doha, Qatar. We will use this post in Doha to manage our diplomacy with Afghanistan, including consular affairs. With Americans gone, it's the end of the longest U.S. war in history. It may also be curtains for freedom, for liberty, and for women's rights under Taliban rule. Bureau report, India Today. Major General Chris Donahue was the last American soldier to leave Afghanistan. And this image, taken with night vision optics of him leaving, is now seen as a defining image of America's hasty and humiliating retreat from Afghanistan after a 20-year war. Major General Chris Donahue, commander of the 82nd Airborne Division, can be seen leaving in a C-17 aircraft, ending America's mission in Kabul. He's seen stepping into a, a globe master with someone snapping him from inside the jet, capturing the fading lights of the deserted airport in the background. The image was described in the handout provided by the U.S. Central Command, which said that Donahue boarded the plane along with the last U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan, Ross Wilson. Major Donahue was sent to Afghanistan days ago to facilitate evacuation. Aptly, he is seen stepping into the aircraft after everyone is safely inside. 
Now, as the U.S. finally pulled out its last troop, uh, the country now in tatters. As the Taliban begins its rule, it's complete chaos in the war-torn country. It stares at hunger and at financial crisis. Here's our report. For the U.S., it's curtains on a 20-year-long war in foreign land. But for Taliban, it is a new beginning. And they are down to business. God willing, we will try to establish a safe atmosphere in all the provinces of Afghanistan so that the people do not worry and do not fear the Mujahideen because they are our brothers and we protect them and together with them we will build the homeland. Despite these assurances across the country, the situation is nowhere near normal. In Kabul, these are the frantic scenes. People reaching out for bags of food handed out by social workers. Desperate lines outside ATMs ahead of full-fledged Taliban rule. There are fears of restrictions on cash withdrawal by the Central Bank of Afghanistan. The country's economy that was fully dependent on foreign aid is now virtually decimated. Not just a financial crisis, a medical crisis also looms large. The fact that, as you may know, the whole health system in Afghanistan was supported from outside, uh, foreign aid, mainly the World Bank, the EU and some other donors. And uh, as you may know, the World Bank, but but also the IMF uh, and some others froze uh, the, the funds for Afghanistan. And one of the great risks for the, for the health system here is basically to collapse because of lack of support. Following the US troop pullout, under a new Taliban regime, Afghanistan is staring at uncertain future on all fronts. Social, political and economic. The war-hardened citizens would hope they can survive this upheaval too. Bureau Report, India Today. India says it's committed to evacuating stranded Afghan minorities who may want to leave the country after the Taliban takeover. Sources say Prime Minister Modi has directed a high-level group comprising of EAM, NSA and senior officials to focus on immediate priorities of India. Foreign Secretary Harsh Shringla said that India always provided strong support to minority communities like Hindus and Sikhs in Afghanistan, adding that it's an important part of New Delhi's effort to evacuate Afghan nationals. Over 800 people were evacuated from Afghanistan and brought to India since August 16th when the first group was airlifted from Kabul. Meanwhile, the UN Security Council under India's presidency adopted a strong resolution seeking stopping of Afghanistan's soil for use of terror activities. Taliban have made uh, yet another outreach towards India. This time, senior Taliban leader Sher Mohammed Abbas uh, has uh, described India as an important country in the region. The man who is touted to be the foreign minister in the Taliban 2.0 government said that maintaining trade ties with India is important. This comes after Taliban spokesperson assured that India could carry on its reconstruction and development projects. But can India forget Taliban terror? As the Taliban government takes shape in Afghanistan, a senior member of the Taliban leadership, Sher Mohammad Abbas Stanik Zai, has said that the group wants to maintain trade, economic and political relations with India. Stanik Zai, widely tipped as Afghanistan's next foreign minister, asked India to retain a diplomatic presence in the war-devastated country. The Taliban leader also said air trade route between India and Afghanistan needs to be kept open. He was referring to the air corridor between India and Afghanistan that was established to boost trade between the two countries in view of Pakistan's denial to allow transit access. 
Stanik Zai was part of a group of foreign cadets who received training at the prestigious Indian Military Academy in Dehradun in the early 1980s. He also described India as an important country in the region. ما می خواهیم که همکاری های سالمشان دوام بکنه در رسای دیپلماتیک با هم روابط حسنه داشته باشیم همچنان اگر نیاز میشه سفیرهای ما هم در تمام کشورها خواد بود و سفرهای کشورهای دیگر هم در افغانستان فعلا هم هستن فضای اطمینانی برشان مساعد شده This is in the first time the Taliban have reached out to India Soon after the fall of Kabul, Taliban spokesperson had said that India can complete its reconstruction and infrastructure projects, even going to the extent of calling Kashmir a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. India has been a key stakeholder in Afghanistan and has invested nearly $3 billion in carrying out around 500 projects across the country. For now, India has been adopting a wait-and-watch policy. Currently, there is a lack of clarity or no clarity about any entity forming a government uh, in Kabul. Uh, we of course continue to monitor the situation very carefully. Uh, this is an evolving situation and I think uh, for the moment that's all I have to say about uh, this element. India though hasn't forgotten Taliban terror. In 1999, the Taliban government allowed the hijackers of an Indian Airlines flight from Kathmandu, Nepal to escape. Taliban permitted Masood Azhar to travel to Pakistan, where he founded Jaish-e Mohammed, an organization responsible for a spate of high-profile attacks across India. Does India have a choice of engaging with Taliban now? Bureau Report, India Today. Former Pakistan cricketer Shahid Afridi has expressed his love for the Taliban. He says that they've come with a positive mind and as they've allowed women to work. He also said uh, that Taliban like cricket a lot. Uh, take a listen to his praise that the Pakistani cricketer had earlier made anti-India remarks over Kashmir. <laughs>